good evening and thank you uh, this day 14th of February 2020 uh, and this is Valentine's Day this is Valentine's Day thank you uh, for joining me David Omi my own David Omi this is going to be a very brief a very brief and short live broadcast uh, uh, on this day 14th of February on Valentine's Day thank you uh, James Obiora for joining me cheesy thank you for joining me Tony Black thank you for joining me we'll be waiting for this is very late now but uh, it is very imperative that I come to quickly air this Add this uh, uh, information that I have. So, uh, thank you for joining me, Prince. Uh, ACN, thank you for joining me. We're waiting for at least like maybe 500. Of course, people are sleeping. This is weekend, this is Friday. People are sleeping. So, let's wait for like 500 viewers and we continue. Uh, Samuel, thank you for joining me. Henry, my own Henry, thank you for joining me. You are watching me this evening my live broadcast thank you for joining me thank you for joining me Ezi Babuja. i think you are from you are watching from uh, dubai thank you uh, samson mnk ez onodu go onodu ga see you this is 500 there we go so i want to first of all uh sympathize with uh, i'm going to call him today my leader namdikano he is my leader. Uh, he is the leader of the Igbos and leader of Biafra worldwide. Uh, and it is time uh, for those who are yet to accept that fact. It is time you come to reality. Namdekano remain the biggest and the biggest leader of Biafra alive so far. And I am giving that respect to him today. Uh, I am also... Uh, uh, sending a condolence message to him he, this is the biggest thing that can happen to anybody uh, burying your both parents the same day it is really something that people should understand and not only that he buried his parents in the same day but he was not there he has paid the biggest price in the struggle for referendum of Biafra Republic and it will go down in history so Namdi Kano is my leader, and I will give that respect and honor to him. He remained the greatest ever, and the greatest alive from the Biafra Republic. So Namdi Kano, take heart and remember the struggle that is ahead of us. And your parents has paid the biggest price. Of course, a lot of souls has been lost in the course of this agitation for Biafra freedom. A lot of people have been killed by Nigeria security agents. And there are people who have been killed directly by Nigeria security agents. And there are people that have been killed by proxy. The people that are killed indirectly. And your parents happens to be those that were killed indirectly so my condolences to you your family and to epop worldwide and from this day it is not just about the epop it is not just about the ipop the ipob but it is for the entire biafra it is for the entire biafra nation and like you said yesterday everybody kept quiet when the boko haram members were being killed and molested by the security agent of nigeria until they got angry and this is where we are today anybody who listened to that message we know that all that you said mazin namdekano we are nothing but fact and truth. So, having said this, 
I will go forward and go ahead with what I have to tell Biafrans, Nigerians, and people who still think that Nigeria disintegration will, ne will not be possible. I want to take us back to some memories, some histories of what has transpired and happened in different places of the world. Today, I'm going to start. First of all, I want to tell Nigerians what has happened. The biggest news from the, from the US is that the Secretary of State of America, of the United States of America, is having Africa talk. And in the list of the country he is going to visit, they have skipped Nigeria. So when we were telling you people, it is not just about coming publicly to give $40 million of aid to Nigeria. It does, the money is just nothing compared to the integrity, compared to the rottenness of Nigeria, and compared to the rating of Nigeria when it comes to Trump administration. So they have, they have given $40 million to Nigeria in aid, and on that day where this foreign minister, Onyama, or what he's called, went to America with big large number of delegates, and after that, because of the Abacha loot, they wanted to collect. And today, that Secretary of State is coming to Africa. And he is not coming to Nigeria. He is going to be visiting Senegal, Ethiopia, and Angola. And Nigeria is out of it. So, it is for... Because a lot of people are faulting that America shouldn't have given the aid to Nigeria. Of course, the international politics have a way. It's, that is a way you play international politics. Sometimes people, of course, like you know, Nigerians are so angered about what, what is going on, about any country coming to support this government, that the present government of Nigeria, everybody is angry. So you don't want to hear anything positive coming from any country. So I don't blame Nigerians who are who are angered about America giving forty million dollars to to Nigeria? But the fact is that the money is nothing compared to to the diplomatic uh, uh, boxing that is going on because Nigeria is not regarded as a country that the Secretary of State of America will visit. So Nigeria is out of that visit. And that should send a very strong signal to Nigeria as well, that the Secretary of State is coming to Africa and he is visiting Angola, Senegal, and Ethiopia. And Nigeria is not in the list. And Nigeria will never be in the list. And why would anybody visit Nigeria in the first place? So that is one, one thing I want to tell you today. But those of you who are thinking that disintegration of Nigeria is not coming. I want to tell you people one thing today. I have lists of a similar a similar situation. What is going on in Nigeria now? I, I just want to start from the uh, the country that everybody knows called Soviet Union. The Soviet Union. I want to start from Soviet Union. Uh, I'm sorry because you know I'm I'm very tired uh, this weekend, so. I might be touching my eye a little bit before going to sleep. So, the Soviet Union, if you have not heard about the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union is uh, a country that just were operated like this Nigeria that we have today. It was a union of many countries in one nation. And they used exactly what this present government is doing in Nigeria today. They use force, they, they were tyrannic, they, they, they use all kind of hostility, all kind of abuse of human rights. They did a lot of things in Soviet Union. And those uh, uh, hostility that the government of the Soviet, Soviet Union was using 
we are nothing other than to compel the people, these different countries, to continue to remain in Soviet Union. So, but these people, just like the Biafrans now, just like the Oduduwa, just like the Middle Belt, just like other, other nations, other countries that you find in Nigeria today, probably Nigeria is going to break into a lot of pieces. But of course, we don't care how many pieces is going to break. What, the only thing we are interested in is complete disintegration of Nigeria. So, the Soviet Union, uh, nobody believed that Soviet Union is going to, is going to, uh, there, there's going to be disintegration in Soviet Union. But it happens that in 1991, in 1991, Soviet Union break into pieces. And you can imagine uh, nobody ever expected that Soviet Union is going to disintegrate. But they disintegrated. And from Soviet Union, we have about 15 countries. I want to, what, what, why I want to, it is very important that I let you people know, because uh, a lot of people, especially those who don't know what is going on, uh, we never believe that Nigeria is going to disintegrate. But I'm, I'm going to tell you this night that disintegration of Nigeria has already, it already happened. What we're, late, what we're waiting for now is just a physical manifestation and demonstration of the disintegration of Nigeria. But disintegration of Nigeria has already happened. Nigeria is already disintegrated. Nigeria has disintegrated in patriotism. Nigeria has disintegrated in security-wise. Nigeria has disintegrated in uh, economic-wise. Nigeria has disintegrated in, uh, in region. So it is not just, you know, what you have, what you have in Nigeria now is patching, you know, when, uh, when the tube of tire is, you know, get punctured. You try to patch it, and when you when you patch it in that particular spot, it may leak from a different spot again, and then you patch it again, and then it will come to a point that the tube of that tire will be useless. So Nigeria is in at that verge now, at the point of that a lot of patch have have uh, have been done, and it can no long, no longer be patched again, and that is. That is because when a security, when a central security system of a country is compromised, not just compromised, but that somebody just gave information to uh, uh, to the uh, to enemy, for example. But the fact is that the security system is compromised, like it is unredeemable. You can't it you can't redeem the 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 rottenness in the security apparatus of Nigeria. The it it is compromised with terrorism, it is com to compromised by bandit, it is compromised by criminals. In, in today Nigeria, you see policemen going to kidnap, you see policemen going to uh, arm robbery, you see policemen committing a lot of crime, and the, in Nigeria of today, you see military uh, uh, supplying arms to Boko Haram, you see military going to kidnap, you see military uh, participating in arm robbery, and a lot of criminals a lot, of, a lot of crime in Nigeria, and they are participating in these heinous crimes that are going on in Nigeria. So when you have a security agencies that or agencies that are now involved in crime of this kind of magnitude of crime, like even terrorism, it means that the country has collapsed, and now Nigeria have collapsed because the few people that you are you that has been accused or have been arrested or have been caught red-handed from these security uh, um, security agencies committing this crime, uh, there are many of them who you don't know. There are many of them who are Boko Haram members who are living freely and still do their job on daily basis. So now, the countries that were, the, 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 the uh, 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 Soviet Union disintegrated in 1991. And from the Soviet Union, you have about 15 countries. That, that are today uh, well-to-do countries and they are doing very well. 
So I'm going to be giving you the names of these countries that that were that were uh, part of uh, uh, Soviet Union and today they are country of their own. And I'm going to tell you their names and their population. So when we talk about Nigeria disintegration, if you, if the Soviet Union can disintegrate, of course there are other countries that have disintegrated and I'm going to be bringing them for uh, to you one after the other but today I want to focus on Soviet Union so the Soviet Union disintegrated in 1991 and the the country that came out of the Soviet Union uh, are as follow we have the country called Armenia Armenia was part of the Soviet Union and the population of Ar Armenia is about 2 million, 2.9 million uh, people made up Armenia. Armenia is now an independent country of their own and the country is not as poor. Of course, every, you, the, all these countries have their own, their own uh, problem from the effect of the Russia of this uh, Soviet Union. So, but Armenia is now a country of its own and the population is 2.9 million. 2.9 million is not up to the population of Onitsha. Onitsha, not just Anambra state, but I'm talking of Onitsha in Biafra land. So 2.9 million people it is the population of a whole country called Armenia. And like I said, 2.9 million people is not on, is not up to the population in Onitsha. And when I say Onitsha, I mean Onitsha as a city, not Anambra state as a whole. So they are not up to the population of Onitsha. And this Armenia is country of its own. The second country that were, that got independence from this, uh, from this Soviet Union is the Republic of Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. The Republic of Azerbaijan, of course, is a, a little bit uh, bigger in population. There are about 10 million. There are about 10 million people. But one thing I want you to pay attention is this. One thing I want you to pay attention is this. The higher the population, the poorer they become. The higher the, po the population, the more problem and more complex problem these countries have. Now, this... Uh, this uh, rep Republic of Azerbaijan have 10 million population, but the Armenia is more uh, econo uh, economy wise is more better than this Azerbaijan, and that is because of the population of their population. And in Nigeria today, you have heard that they estimated Nigeria up to 200 million, and the kind of mentality of Africa. There is no way if you are thinking that Nigeria is going to get better because the population is increasing every day. So there is, I don't know, there is no way you can do anything that you will feel the impact when you have 200 million population in a country as corrupt, as bad as Nigeria. This is one of the reasons. This is what we are talking about. The population, the higher the population, the bigger the problem. And now Nigeria population is not reducing, it is increasing. By the time you, if you continue to shout one Nigeria, by the time you get to 2023, for example, the population of Nigeria will catapult to up to 220 million. Because you know, the northern part of Nigeria, they are giving birth like animals. So by the time you get to 2023, you will be seeing 220 million people and the higher the problem the, the 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 higher the population the poorer the country become and that is the reason why the not are claiming that they are higher they are higher in population and that is where you have 87 percent of poverty of nigeria so thank you Ladi, for joining me i see you so now uh, so I want you, as I'm going through this list, I want you to pay attention to the population of the country and how the country is doing. Because the higher the population, the more problem the country have. Now, we have another, the number three country that came out of Soviet Union is Belarus. Belarus have so, uh, 9.4 million people as uh, the population is 9.4 million. 
So when you look at this 9.4 million, now you look at this Republic of Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan, the 10 million, even though the number is just a little bit higher than this, uh, the, the Republic of Azerbaijan is a little bit higher than Belarus. But Belarus have 9.4 million and Belarus having just a little bit lesser than or that country is still better than this Azerbaijan, which is 10 million. And there are 9.3. But this country is still poor. Now, the number four country is Estonia. Number four country is Estonia. Now, from the country that break out of uh, 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 Soviet Union, Estonia has the lowest, the lowest population. Estonia have the lowest population. Now, Estonia population is about 1.3 million. 1.3 million is not what is uh, the, uh, for example, a Bonny state, Abakaliki capital, have more than this number of people. And that is the number that made up a country called Estonia. Estonia is 1.3 million people. And like I said again, the number of people in Abakaliki, in a Bonny state, Abakaliki, I'm not talking about a bony state as a, as a whole, but I'm talking about Abakaliki. The number of people in Abakaliki is bigger than the country, this country that you see called Estonia. And guess what? Estonia is one of the most progressive countries among all these countries that break out of Soviet Union because the number of their population is the lowest at 1.3 million. So why I'm why I'm why I have why I am starting why I'm starting this is that so that a lot of you will understand the importance of breaking up of Nigeria because when we a lot of you have this Africa mentality that oh the the bigger the, when you come together uh, uh, you, you become stronger no this what where Nigeria has been, the problem of Nigeria today. The state where Nigeria is today is not that kind of adage that says uh, the, uh, you stand together, you are stronger, and you divided, you fall, or how, how they say it. It is not applicable in Nigeria. The Nigeria of today has become the reverse, has become the case. So divided in Nigeria, we stand, and uh, uh, together, we fall. So if we are, if you are preaching the one one Nigeria, it means you are preaching poverty. It means you are preaching hardship. It means you are preaching terrorism. It means you are supporting banditry. It means you are supporting armed robbery. It means you are supporting kidnapping because Nigeria population and Nigeria has become ungovernable. Nobody will be able to govern Nigeria of today, and that is why we need to divide the country in parts. To be able to be to, so, that, so that it will be able to, to to be controlled by those who are governing whichever part and whichever part. So not, Nigeria as of today, not only it is not only the population, the population is the biggest player, but it is not just the population, but the fact that the cultural difference, the mentality difference, the way of thinking and all that are the, totally different, which makes Nigeria case more complex than this country I am mentioning now because this uh, country in Europe, in the Western part, in the, in the Western world, are more enlightened, more civilized than this Nigeria that you are seeing today. So the, the way of thinking of people are totally different. And this is what is making a big difference in this Nigeria case. Because Nigeria is that you have people we call nomadic Fulanese who are not educated, who are not civilized, who are just blood suckers, who are witches and wizards, who are the every evil thing you can think of. They never think of, they are not progressive. They are not progressive. They are bad. And the only thing they look for is to grab power and they never want to do anything with the power. So you have Aosa people who are almost the same, who have been, who have been overrun by this Fulani, uh, Fulani people co conquered by them. And you can't see them thinking differently. So apart from the population aspect of it, apart from the population of Nigeria that has brought the country down, another problem is this divergent ways of living and it can never work. So I continue. And the next, the next in the line is, is a country called Georgia. Georgia is, was part of the 
of the uh, Soviet Union, and in 1991, it was among the country that got their independence from this uh, Soviet Union, and the population is 3.7 million people. Now, this population, you look at 3.7 million people, they do better than Belarus, they do better than this Azerbaijan, this Republic of Azerbaijan, because of the population. And when you are looking at these numbers of population, you find out that they have the same culture, they speak the same language. So it is not like in Nigeria, where you have this kind of people who do not understand your language and you do not understand their language. So the language becomes another barrier to progress. Because when you have country that at least that you speak same language, you understand each other, the progress of that country is you know goes faster than those who have all these kind of diversities like they tell you when they want to deceive you they will tell you that diversity is the thing that makes us strong no diversity does not make you strong the people that says and uses this kind of phrases are those who are uh, uh, looting the country who are using the advantage of diversity to enrich themselves who are using the advantage of diversity to, to enrich their family and benefit from the system. But those who really want the best interest of that country can never rely and can never tell you or preach to you that diversity is the thing that makes you strong. You say, okay, now, if you, I want to make you understand something. Because when they tell you that diversity makes you strong, are you, go, are you saying now that you are in line with what Boko Haram is doing in the North? Because that is diversity. Diversity is what Boko Haram is doing in the North. It is diversity. Diversity is the Fulani who comes to your farm and destroy all your crops and all your farmland. It is diversity because that is their culture. Their culture is to carry cows and go around. That is diversity. Diversity is also that Fulani people are carrying, before they used to carry dagger, that is the knife. And if you do anything to them, they will stab you with the knife because they don't value human life. Valuing human life is also what we call diversity. It is part of diversity. Diversity is that Fulani don't value human life. And you from the South value human life. That is diversity. So how can that kind of thing make you stronger? How can that kind of thing make you stronger as a country? It cannot. Now, diversity is also that they are preaching in the North that you must accept Islam, otherwise they will kill you. Now, they will capture you as a Christian and kill you in the North and chop your head. That is diversity. So, are you going to say that killing you in the North and chopping off your head, which is also part of diversity, is making you stronger as a Nigeria? This is the fact that you people must come in term with, that diversity can never make you strong. But now, let me tell you how it, the diversity, how if Nigeria is break is broken into, into pieces, how, this, how now it is going to work better than this preaching of diversity, this diversity, that. Now, if you break Nigeria into pieces, those who are comfortable with the one chopping off head, we know that there are comfortable with them. So if you are going to that country where they are chopping off head, you know that you are, you are going on suicide mission. Otherwise, you will not have any reason to visit Northeast because Northeast will be a country of their own. We are Islamic State, we take control and all that. And those who are not comfortable with the Islamic State in the Northeast can relocate to another part of the North where there is no Islamic State and they will be comfortable and they will be safe. And which means there is no diversity. Now everybody is speaking Arabic and Hausa language. And no, no, everybody is going to al Majiri school. Those who want to, to join us to be civilized will come to our country after meeting the requirement to be issued visa. After meeting the requirement to be issued with a proper document to come and which will include a security report on that particular individual a police report a police report showing that you are not a criminal even if you are a criminal of course we know you can go easily easily go and get paper showing that you are not a criminal but we will, you will, you will, we will watch closely we will watch you closely because we will have what we call intelligence 
the best intelligence in Africa if, if Biafra is actualized. So now, if you are still believing that your diversity is making you stronger, you, from today that I am making this analysis, for you to continue to believe that, you must bring a very uh, 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 reasonable reason, a very reasonable argument to tell me that what, contrary to what I'm explaining to you now, that diversity is making you stronger. Remember, for, remember let me repeat it again. For you to continue to claim that because Nigeria is a big country and for that reason you feel that it is better we continue to remain as a one country. Let me tell you this, that your diversity is dis has destroyed you. Diversity is the reason why you don't have best school today. Diversity is the reason why your president will get sick and he goes to London for treatment. That is what diversity have caused. And how did diversity cause this? The diversity caused it because when you have Fulani president ruling you for many years, the Fulani president is not innovative. And you have people from the southern part of Nigeria, Igbos and Yorubas, who want to be president of Nigeria and they have good thing to do for Nigeria. For example, building world-class hospital so that Nigerians will not be able to travel outside to India to go for medical checkup or medical treatment. Now, the Fulani don't want you to come to become president of Nigeria because they are afraid that if you become the president of Nigeria, you are going to make them suffer. And how are you going to make them suffer? It is a natural thing. You don't necessarily have to make them suffer, but because mo none of them are qualified to head any post in Nigeria by merit, by merit. Of course, um, a few of them have, you know, went to school and they are, they are qualified, but not all of them. For example, all the people that are heading the, the, uh, the, uh, the Nigeria today, different sectors of Nigeria to, from Fulani, none of them are qualified. None of them are qualified. So if you have a better president today in Nigeria, you will not have the CGN that is now the CGN of Nigeria. He don't qualify. He's not qualified. He is not qualified to be the CGN. So you will not have somebody who is not qualified to head the judiciary of Nigeria. That is one. And that is why you see this mistake of this miscarriage of justice ha happening in, in Supreme Court. Now, the Attorney General of Nigeria today is not qualified to be Attorney General of Nigeria. But because you have a Fulani who is the president, they allowed him to stay. And that is the diversity. That is the result of diversity. Now, every and this is not just coming from me, Simon Ekpa. Every reasonable Nigeria from the uh, Middle Belt, from the southern part of Nigeria, will agree with this line of argument that these people I mentioned now are not qualified. Okay, now that is diversity. Now you go to the north, you go to these Fulani people, because they don't go to school. So anyone who can speak English and who, who might practice himself out of school becomes the champion. And that is why these people you see in Nigeria today, they are the best you can get from Fulani. That is the fact. So when you have their best, their best is not qualified to head a shop of Igbo man in Idumota. That is the fact. So you have these people who are not qualified to head the shop of an Igbo man in Idumota, heading Nigeria. And that is diversity. So you see that diversity has destroyed Nigeria. Because the people that we see that they are not qualified, they are overqualified in Fulani community. And that is why they are appointing them. And that is why Nigeria has gone down. So it is diversity has destroyed Nigeria. So anybody telling you diversity, diversity from today, if you must talk that diversity is the one that you, because of diversity, you are supporting Nigeria, it is time you stop talking because you are disgracing yourself if you are talking again that diversity, our diversity, make us strong. You sh that kind of word should cease co from coming from your mouth. Otherwise, 
I don't think you have any kind of reasoning because how can diversity, after what I'm explaining, after what is going on in Nigeria today that you know by yourself, you are experiencing it, you are still talking diversity. When a Fulani man will come to your farm and, and kill you and then nobody will arrest them because it is their culture and that culture is diversity. The diversity is that you don't kill people, but they kill people. That is diversity. The diversity is that bandits can kidnap you and they, they kill you or they demand for ransom and you pay the ransom and Nigeria police will not do anything. And that Nigeria police are controlled by Fulani and that is diversity. Now, you have diversity in the army. The diversity in the army is this. The diversity is in, the, in the army is that somebody who is from the southern part of Nigeria will be recruited into Nigeria military. The same day with somebody from Fulani. And then after the recruitment, if somebody from the southern part of Nigeria is more smart, more educated, more enlightened than the person who is a Fulani who they got recruited the same day. But before both of them serve 10 years, in Nigeria military, or 15 years, which is the, the highest in Nigeria military. The one from the southern part of Nigeria will still be a lieutenant, while the one from Fulani is already a lieutenant colonel or, 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 or whatever. And that is the diversity. Not only that it is a marginalization in the military, but it is also part of the diversity because the people who are promoting them are the one that has been there from that caliphate and from that Fulani, and that is the result of diversity. And when you complain, when you complain, you can't even complain, you will only complain to your people who understand you. And your people is people from the south, from the southern part of Nigeria. You complain to your small caucus of people that look at this guy that we all joined this military together, he is now a lieutenant colonel, and I am still managing sergeant. It is diversity. And this has happened since Nigeria independence till this day. So diversity never made Nigeria or any, especially, of course, it can work in some European country if there is diversity. But I'm telling you that Nigeria diversity is a scam. It is not a diversity that will progress Nigeria. It is not the kind of diversity that will make you believe in one Nigeria. It is a scam. And that is what you should wake up today to know that Boko Haram is part of diversity because they want Islamic State. You who are in the southern part of Nigeria don't want Islamic State. That is diversity that is making you stronger. How can that make you stronger? I don't know. People in Jos, in Plateau State, in that Plateau State, you have people who are uh, Islamist, you have people who are terrorists. They will wake up one morning or one evening and go to some community and kill people in the community and bomb the community and raise the community. Why are they doing that? They believe that killing people is a way to get their land. And that is diversity. And the people they are killing do not believe in killing people and grabbing their land. And that is diversity. So how can this kind of thing make you stronger as a nation? It never. It has been a, it has been scam all along. And now it is time everybody begin to think that diversity can never make you progress as a, as Nigeria. And since you are now knowing that diversity cannot make you progress, it is time to quit that diversity and that will lead us to disintegration of Nigeria. Now let me continue. The next country in line is Kazakhstan from the from the uh, Soviet Union, a country called Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is a country with about 18.4 million people. Now listen to this, 18.4 million people. I told you the higher the population, the poorer and the more uh, problem those countries have. It's, I'm just giving an example with the country that came out of Soviet Union. Of course, there are countries in the world who have more population and they are doing very well. But I'm just telling you now that uh, why, why, and those countries that are doing very well that have higher population, they have what we call 
a proper federalism. A proper federalism means that you have uh, uh, good federalism, like in the United States of America, for example, where each state have their laws and they have their control, their resources, and all that. And that in that kind of place, that kind of place, it works. But that doesn't mean that in America today you don't have problem of like a, a poverty or you know, low income people and stuff like it. It is there, but it is not as rampant as in in Africa or in Nigeria to be precise. So for you to have a population as big as Nigeria and you are successful, it means that either you disintegrate, which means everybody goes their way, or you start practicing like in America, where every state have their have the right to 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 control their resources. But in Nigeria, oh now it is not possible anymore. That kind of federalism in in Nigeria is not possible. Do you know why it is not possible? It is not possible because the uh, security system of Nigeria has been compromised. And you have all these terrorists in the army, you have all these terrorists in the police, you have criminals in the army, you have criminals in the police. So it can never work. The only way, the, of course, the only way it can work is that every northerner should stay in North, in North. As a military man, you serve in the North and stay in your state. That is the only way it can work. Then when you are if in a Biafra land, we will deal with our own uh, uh, security personnel who are criminals, who already join criminality in the in the army or in police we will deal with them we know how to deal with them but the point is that if you allow any notana to come if it is a kind of federalism that will allow notana to come to biafra land to start to do police work or army work then it's dead on arrival it can never work so that is the point so now this uh, kazakhstan this kazakhstan has 18 18 uh, million 18.4 million people and they are poor at least compared to other countries that have 1.3 million or 2 million or, or so. So they are poor. They are more, of course, they are better than Nigeria, but they are poor compared to the country that have 2 million people, population. Now, the next country that came out of, of, uh, uh, of uh, the Soviet Union is a country called Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Kyrgyzstan is also a country with 6.3 million. And this Kyrgyzstan now, for example, if you look at Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan have is where this this man who at who who is a funny uh, comedy uh, movie who at comedy movie called Bora. That is where that is where Borat. Sorry, that is where Borat come from. <laughs> sorry, then you have this uh, Kyrgyzstan that is six point three million. This Kyrgyzstan also come from. Uh, we are um, a part of the country that got independence from the Soviet Union and they are better somehow than this Kazakhstan because the number of the population is only 6.3 million. And I'm telling you now, in the Lagos state today that you see, how many million is in Lagos? Lagos, there, some, some time ago, was estimated to be 4 million, uh, 4 million people or so, or 40 million, I don't know. So if you, you can check that yourself, but this country is 6.3 million people and they are doing fine. They have peace. The most important thing you should know is the peace, the peace aspect of it. When they were under a Soviet Union, they undergo a lot of intimidation, a lot of harassment, tyrannics, just like this Nigeria now. The Russians were subjecting them to a lot of things and until they got this independent and today the most important thing in life is peace if they are doing politics and having disagreement or killing each other within themselves within the, co the country that that's a different thing they have their self to sort out but the fact is that they are free from the oppressors from the oppressors they are free they have the same culture they have the same religion they have the same belief they eat the same food, they speak the same language, they are free. So, and most of this country, for example, they speak Russia, some of them, but they have their own language. So now you don't need to compel anybody to start speaking Russia or learning how to speak Russia because they have their own language and they speak their own language and they have their own culture. But when they were in this Soviet Union, everybody is compulsory. You begin to learn how to speak Russia because Russia is the one controlling the Soviet Union. So now, another country that come out of 
Soviet, uh, Soviet Union is a country called Latvia. Latvia. Latvia is a small country. And do you know the population of Latvia is 1.9 million people? 1.9 million people is Latvia. This, this country I'm mentioning now is a country that most of people in Nigeria will sell their land to go. It's a country their properties sell everything they have to go to these countries because the country is better than Nigeria. The country is better than Nigeria and that is why some of you will sell, will sell your properties to go to these countries and stay. Now, the next country online, Latvia, like I said, is 1.9 million people and they are doing better, they are living in peace ever since they, were, they, they got independent from the Soviet Union. Now, the next country is Lithuania. And why, I, why this Lithuania and Latvia have boundary? In fact, Lithuania have boundary uh, uh, from uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Finland, uh, they are all, this country have almost the same line. So from this Lithuania, from Latvia, you get to Lithuania. So it is almost the same country. And now you will ask yourself, the, this Latvia and Lithuania have boundary. And Lithuania is 2.7 million people. 2.7 million. Why Latvia is 1.9 million. So if it's in Africa, they will say, both of you come together because you are just uh, 1.9 million and this one is 2.7 million. Both of you come together. It doesn't work like that because these people are different. Okay, now that Latvia is 1.9 million and this Lithuania is 2.7 million. They have boundary. They are in the same region, in the same place. But they have this, they, they, have, they have separate government and all that. And they, are own, they have their own country. So now, this Latvia and the Lithuania can, it cannot be compared because of the population difference. And the population difference here is not even much. So when you look at 1.9 million to 2.7 million, the population difference is not much, but it is reflecting in the economy of, this, of these two countries. And they got independent from Soviet Union. Now, you have Russia. Pay attention to this. You have Russia. Russia was part of the Soviet Union. In fact, Russia was the one controlling this whole Soviet Union then. But Russia population is 146.7 million people. 146.7 million people estimated. Now, you see the problem. Russia have oil, Russia have oil and Russia have money, but what is going on in Russia today is almost the same thing than what is going on in Nigeria, only that North Russia is more westernized. Russia is developed, they have good uh, structures, they have beautiful place and all that. But I'm telling you, there are people that are very, very poor in Russia today. There are people who don't have toilet, who don't have toilet. There are some part of Russia that you, you see people, you, you see hospital in, in that part of Russia that are just like toilet. And it is the same system with Nigeria. But then Russia have a place that are at least some of most of the cities of Russia are developed and Russia have money. But I am telling you today that there are part of Russia that you will go, you will never believe that it is Russia. They don't have hospital in those areas. They are very, 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 very poor in those areas of Russia. And that is as a result of the population. The population of Russia is 146.7 million and it reflects. So the way you go to St. Petersburg, you see a lot of nice houses. They have best army. They, 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 they pump money into their military and all that. But I am telling you today that there are part of Russia that you don't believe that it would be like village in the north. There are part of Russia that don't have clothes to wear. There are part of Russia that they are very poor. The hospital in that place is like toilet in Nigeria. Have you seen? Have you seen? Uh, have you seen a, a, a picture or video taken from the police college in Ikeja during Jonathan a time? That was a police co college that we have videoed and posted online during President Jonathan time, where people are putting stones. We are policemen who are in police college in Ikeja. We are putting stones on the under their bed to sleep. I tell you, in Russia, you have part of Russia that have 
exactly the same situation in in the villages so so that is the problem of this population and any day any day russia give independence to those parts of russia that are this poor they will develop they will begin to develop but of course they can't it it is not that easy because all of them speak the same language all of them speak russia they have the same culture and all that but only corruption that is in russia and in nigeria own is this different because we don't we are not the same people we are totally different so now the next uh, the next uh, country that got independent from soviet union is a country called tajikistan tajikistan is a country with 9.2 million population and when you watch when you look at this uh Iguchi Goze, thank you for joining me when you watch this 9.2 million people you find out that they are also uh struggling compared to a country that is one two point something million it, it the population have a lot of things to do with the economy of the country especially when that country is not so rich or is not so innovative and all around this country i'm mentioning now have no natural natural resources and they are surviving and running the country and people are making it and they are powerful and all that you don't you don't hear them having oil they don't have that oil so now russia when the uh when the soviet union uh, you know disintegrated of course the soviet union the russia they have oil but these countries they left that oil they don't want oil they want peace they left the oil. They know that Russia have oil. They know that Russia is a rich country and all that. But they don't feel the impact of Russia in their life. So they struggle for disintegration of the country, of the, of the Soviet Union, even though there is oil in Soviet Union. But they didn't want that oil. They all separated and the Soviet Union was disintegrated. And today they don't have oil. This country I'm mentioning now. But... People will sell their properties from Nigeria and sell their land to go to this country and have peace, live in peace and make money. Now, the next country in line is a country called uh, Moldova. Moldova is a country that got independence from the Soviet Union as well. Moldova population is about 2.6 million population. 2.6 million. Now, when you look at this Moldova Compared to other uh, other countries that are like 18 million, for example, they are kings. They do better than a country that have higher population, and these countries don't have even the land square. The square, the land square, uh, uh, their land mass is not even something to write home about. There are some times from from uh, from uh, Finland to Czech Republic, from Finland to Czech Republic by car, you are going to drive 1,500 kilometers from Finland to Czech Republic. And that is five, five country. You will drive, you will, you will from Finland, from, let me say from Estonia, you go to Estonia, Estonia to Latvia, Latvia to Lithuania, Lithuania to Poland, Poland to Czech Republic. You drive this place, it is going to from uh, from from Estonia to Czech Republic is is about about 1,300 kilometers to drive by car. So 1,300 kilometers to by car. How many how many kilometers do you have from Lagos to Abuja, for example? It, I think it is more than that. And you will drive these five countries, these four uh, four countries, for example, from Estonia down to Czech Republic. You will drive it under how many hours you will drive the 1300 kilometers per hour and the roads are good you see so this is five country and now when we talk and the population is not even up to one state in nigeria and the, that is why you will see that nigerians are selling properties to travel to these countries and none of you are asking questions you go there you will say your property you say you are living you are living nigeria you are living nigeria but then when we talk about disintegration you say you want nigeria bigger you say you want nigeria bigger that that is where i, I, I love this i love this uh, uh, country nigeria because we are large what are you gaining with large what are you gaining with with population what you are what are you gaining with 200 million it is a shame 200 million you cannot even bring somebody who is learned 
who is smart, who has experience to lead you as a country. You don't even have that possibility that you have professors, that a professor, a professor is a vice to a certifi uh, somebody who do not have certificate and, uh, and is a president. Over 200 million people. You people are being uh, taken on a ride and over 200 million people in Nigeria, nobody can talk. Nobody can talk. Hunger has finished all of you because they, they, they suppress you with hunger and when they give you one peanut, you'll be jumping up. And you forget to think that you are going to American embassy every day. You are going to German embassy every day. You are going to all these countries. You are going to embassy looking for visa. You don't know that the country you are going to has only 2 million people living there. And they are doing well. And, but you want your own country to stay under 200, uh, to be, continue to be 200 million people. And not only, the, and like I said, it is not about the population, but the diversity. The diversity is not working. The country you are going to, when you are looking for visa, do you, do you, when you go there, what language are they speaking? They have one single language. One single language. Every country in Europe have one single language. And they have English, even some people don't even have English as official. Most of this country have their official language. And English language is never official language in any country in Europe. Most, they have their own language. And in Nigeria, you speak English. The English is your own language. According to you, you have English. But do you know what the diversity has cost you in Nigeria? The diversity of Fulani. The Fulani being part of Nigeria is the reason why you that are saying that you are from English country, you, are, you will be subjected to write, to write SAT TOEFL before you can be admitted into any university in the world, especially in Europe and America. You can't go to a university from, from Nigeria. You cannot, or you cannot apply to any school from Nigeria without write, writing TOEFL or SAT, test of English as a foreign language but you are claiming to be from English-speaking country. Do you know why this is, this is being done to Nigeria? It is because of these Fulani people. It is because of these Fulani, these people, Fulani, these uh, Dundees. Because anybody from Yoruba land can speak English, can write English very well. Anybody from Biafra land can speak English and write English very well, even from the Middle Belt. But they cannot write it, and they have overrided, they, uh, they are overriding you, other Nigerians. And when you apply to school in America, they will tell you to bring your test, your test at TOEFL, test of English as a foreign language. Or they will tell you to bring SAT, SAT test. Before you can be, and even if after giving you admission, before you can be accepted or admitted into the school, you have to write a test, a English language, as a, a test of English language as a foreign language. And you come to tell, to tell us you are, you, you, the diversity is what? This is the part of the diversity that has killed you because you are undergoing a lot of unnecessary uh, things before you can be able to, to do what other people are doing. But you are being taught in your school with English. In the university in Nigeria, your official language is English language. In your secondary school is English language in Nigeria. But anytime you want to apply for school in the United States, they will tell you to write TOEFL. That is the point. That is what we are telling you because they are listening to your president. They are listening to your attorney general. They, are, they have been listening to them since 1960 when they talk. They know that these people are. They, they can't. You can't tell me that they are. They are speaking English in their in their country, and that is reflecting in international community as a Nigerian. It is reflecting, and you are paying the price of the diversity. The diversity is what you are paying today. That is why you will be subjected to a lot of scrutiny before you can be able to travel abroad. It is the diversity that you have found yourself. But look at it. When we have Nigeria disintegrated, probably we can even have 10 countries. Nobody cares for the fact that it is disintegrated. They will, you will begin to present and present your, the image of your own country in a different way to the international community. And the way you present your image is the way they are going to treat you. Nigeria have presented their image, and what you see today is how your image has been presented to international community. That is why most of you will hide your passport if you are traveling. You don't want people to see that your passport is green and have coat of arm of Nigeria. 
because of shame. Now, the next country that came out of this of this uh, uh, Soviet Union is a country called Turk, uh, uh, Turk, uh, Turkmenistan or something. Uh, Turkmenistan, a country called Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan is also a part of the country that came out of the Soviet Union and there are only 5.8 million people. 5.8 million people and they are better than those who are 18 million. And the next country that came out of is what the country called Ukraine. Everybody knows Ukraine. Everybody knows Ukraine. At least you have heard of Ukraine and all that because they have, at a point, they have issue with the same Russia in a place called Kremlin. And Russia annexed Kremlin. They grabbed Kremlin to, to their own uh, uh, country and it sparked a lot of uh, condemnation from the international community and Russia went to war in Ukraine and today they have grabbed Ukraine and they annexed Ukraine you annexed this Kremlin uh, uh, to, to their to their own uh, uh, country so Ukraine is about 42 million and everybody knows the situation of Ukraine. You can't compare Ukraine to other. Of course, Ukraine is, has a lot of good structures and, and all that. But then, because of the economy of Ukraine is stronger than, a little bit stronger than other, other, all this, con this small country I have mentioned, but there are about 42 million people. But still, they are not as good as other countries. There are still poor people and they are struggling, but of course, they are not as bad as Nigeria, but they are 42 million. Then the next uh, country is uh, Uz Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan is a country that was part of the uh, Soviet Union and there are about 33.9 million, almost 40, almost uh, uh, 34 million people. And today, today, as I talk to you, they are in peace, they are living in peace. So, Nigerians, Biafrans, you see, this is, I have just taken uh, Soviet Union. I'm going to be addressing other countries and taking you through this history and memory lane for you to begin to think that, first of all, what I, what I want you to get into your head today from this my live video is that the population of Nigeria is too big for every Nigeria to feel the impact of governance. That is one. Two, what I want you to get from this video is that the diversity of Nigeria, if you are waiting that Nigeria is going to get better, you are fooling yourself. The diversity has done a lot of damage and the diversity has collapsed to Nigeria today. And if you are waiting that you are going to have a better president or that somebody, you are looking for somebody who is going to come to lead Nigeria, you are living in full paradise. Even if God comes down today to rule Nigeria, he cannot do anything to Nigeria unless he kill everybody in the north. So, this is not, I'm not mocking God, but I'm just telling you the fact. Because even when Jesus was in this world, not everybody respect. They killed him. In fact, from his own disciple, they killed him. He could not even he, he, Jesus could not rule this world and make this world a better place when he was here to show you how bad people are. They crucified him. They killed him. Of course, it was to fulfill the, the scripture. But if Nigeria today is given to God. Of course, for God to make Nigeria a country, he will first of all kill all the terrorists. And I don't think any president today will come to Nigeria and kill all the people in the north, especially the, the, the terrorists. Nobody will do that. But that will be the only remedy. So now, since it is not possible for somebody to come as a president and start killing all the terrorists in the north, since that is not possible, and this is diversity. It is only possible through disintegration of this Nigeria. So, when Nigeria is disintegrated to a different country, it is not, 
we can divide into two, we can divide into four, we can divide into five. To any country, any region who wants to be country, to just let us just have this, this peace. Now, you have a smaller population. Biafra can have their own population. This Igbo's Igbo speaking state, this five Igbo speaking state, like I have already said, is enough to be country. They can have their own little population, their little land, and institute their own government, begin to manage their government. That is already a peace. You know that you don't have any Mohammed who is coming to be commissioner of police. You don't have any Mohammed who is coming to be the commander-in-chief of arms or armed forces in Biafra land. You don't have any Mohammed who is coming to be chief of army staff in Biafra land. You don't have any uh, Abu Bakr who is coming to be local government chairman or co police commissioner in Biafra land. It means you are already, like your problem has been solved 85%. Especially on security matters, even economic matters, the problem of Biafra has been solved 85%. Then the 15% of other problem, which is the petty crime that Biafrans are committing, we will begin to deal with it through instituting a good policy that the government, the good policy that will automatically shape in average Biafra. And I believe Yoruba and Oduduwas are going to adopt the same system. You see? And automatically, you don't have anybody serving in Biafra land that will say he has sworn an oath of allegiance to Boko Haram in the north, and they will be planning how to come to Enugu or how to come to Abakaliki in Ebony State to kill our women with their cows. We don't, we don't allow that. We'll begin to do our own agriculture, breed our own cow, and sell to our people. And everybody will begin to enjoy peace. And any day they come from their north to attack us, then we will defend our land because they have come. It means they are attacking and trespassing, and that is external aggression then we will defend our land. But now it is not possible because you have this different opinion, different view on how to handle security issues, different subjection, different plan, different ideas coming from everywhere on how to handle security that has collapsed because you have people in the north. When you agree to do something, they will say they don't want it. When you have national confab, this is, I'm just telling you the reason why the Nigeria cannot work again and the reason why diversity cannot work. When you have national confab, the national confab, Yoruba people and Biafra people came together and, and then the Middle Belt to, to say, okay, this national conference is going to work. And, and then some people from this Fulani, from the, from the Northeast and Northwest, say they don't want it. And they did everything to make sure they put it under the carpet. That is diversity. So diversity did not help Nigeria and it is not helping Nigeria. So I am calling on Nigerians today for those of you who are shouting and saying that your diversity has made you stronger. It has never made you any stronger. It has destroyed you. Your diversity is the reason why you don't go to school today. Diversity is the reason why you don't have road in Biafra land today. Diversity is the reason why they are celebrating that they are building uh, uh, second mainland, uh, second uh, to, uh, uh, bridge, this this head bridge, they are making show of it. They post it every time on social media that they are building bridge. The bridge that is a responsibility of the government. Now they are building it and they are using it as a campaign. They tell you it will be ready next year. They tell you it will be ready this year. And they are using it to campaign even when there is no campaign going on. I this diversity. The mentality of the people who are in government telling you they have done something nobody has done that Jonathan did not build it. And now it is like a competition. They have won competition because they are building what Jonathan didn't build. You see? But they didn't tell you that Jonathan built Amagiri in the, in the north. And there is no Amagiri built in, in, the, in, the, in Biafra land. But Jonathan built Amagiri, 15 university or 15 school or more than that in the north. And there is no school he did. Jonathan did not build any school in the eastern part of Nigeria. But they will not tell you that. They tell you Jonathan did not build the main line, the, the, the uh, head bridge. And now they are building it as if it, it is something that somebody else should do. You see? So Nigeria is not working. That is what I want you to learn from this broker, live broadcast today. If anybody tells you that Nigeria is big, that 
Indi Ibona say, Anyoko Mamiro no Bafofo is not for Nigeria. Now, when they tell you, when somebody tells you that, oh, we are big, this Nigeria is so big that if we come together, we will be great. We cannot be great with the kind of diversity we have. It is not the diversity that are, that, that are structured to have a great country. Nigeria is designed to fail, and it has failed. So the only thing we are doing now is that this government, they are running from pillar to pole, looking for a way to hang on. They are hanging, they are struggling, and since they know that the Nigeria is disintegrating, they are borrowing. They are borrowing money and borrowing and borrowing and borrowing, and they don't care anymore. They don't even have shame anymore. Everybody is coming to tell you they want to borrow. So please, begin to think towards this line. I'm going to be coming with different countries in, in my next video and different countries that have disintegrated and how they have done well and what is going going on so that you begin to think that Nigeria is too big. And one time Obasanjo was answering question in uh, in one of the hard talk. That was many years ago. He was making this self, he was making mentioning, I will look for that video and post it to you. He said Nigeria have so much population and all that. But of course, none of them were thinking towards this line that it is time to disintegrate Nigeria. Because apart from the population, the diversity in Nigeria have killed the country. So this is what I want you to start preaching to people. If they ask you, if they tell you that anytime somebody tell you that Nigeria is going to be great again, Nigeria can never be great, tell them that the diversity can never make Nigeria great. Tell them that Nigeria is over 200 million and it is not getting better. The only time it will get better is when we disintegrate. And if Biafra is 550 million people, we will continue to manage the 50 million and do something with the life of our people. If Yorubas are like 50 million, it is better. If Arewa is, this in the north, one person is having 27 and 40 children, they can have uh, their 100 and something million people and they will be happy with it. So thank you for joining me this evening and remain blessed. And my condolences on the canoe once more. Thank you very much.